Open world games have been a pillar in gaming genres for the last decade plus, and that isn't looking to stop anytime soon. We have a gigantic amount of open world games coming in the near future and well beyond that into next year the year after that in this video i want to highlight 25 of the upcoming open world titles across all platforms let's just get right into it because there's a lot of ground to cover let's kick things off with forspoken coming from luminous productions and square enix forspoken follows the journey of freya young new yorker transported to the beautiful and cruel land of athea in search of a way home freya must use her newfound magical abilities to traverse sprawling landscapes and and battle monstrous creatures this is a game with stunning visuals uh given that it is going to be a next generation exclusive it'll be releasing on playstation 5 and pc on may 24th i imagine that ultimately it'll be coming to xbox platforms as well but there is a limited timed exclusive on this game it will be one of the next gen titles that is priced at 70 dollars so that's a little bit of a bummer but still this could be a fantastic new ip for square enix and the team over at luminous productions again out may 24th pc and ps5 next up going from a new ip to a very well-known ip we have the latest game in the sonic franchise and that is sonic frontiers finally we're getting a brand new big budget sonic game and sonic frontiers based on the little that we've seen thus far is looking fantastic this one will be coming holiday of 2022 noting worlds will collide in sonic the hedgehog's newest adventure and experience like never before accelerate to new heights and experience the thrill of high velocity open zone freedom battle powerful enemies as you speed through the starfall islands landscapes brimming with dense forests overflowing waterfalls sizzling deserts and more so a variety of different locales nice to see sonic gaining a lot of steam the movies are doing well from a box office standpoint we know that there's gonna be a third movie in the movie franchise knuckles is getting a spin-off franchise and now now you have a big budget video game in Sonic Frontiers. Things are looking up for the Blue Hedgehog. And hopefully that momentum continues for the rest of the year and beyond. Next up, a game that is widely considered to be the most anticipated game of 2022 it's out next week it is from software's elden ring yes elden ring is taking the souls like genre into the open world we are taking dark souls dropping it in open world yes it's a new ip i guess you could call it an elden ring but the new fantasy action rpg rise tarnish and be guided by grace to brandish the power of the Elden Ring and become an Elden Lord in the lands between. I expect a lot of content in this game while we're hearing, you know, you can beat this game in 30, 35 hours, but you can take your time and there's going to be so much content in this game that if you want to do everything, that is going to take you quite a while. Yes, it's going to be difficult. Yes, it's going to be a bit challenging, but I imagine it's going to be incredibly rewarding as well. Elden Ring finally drops on February 25th. Next up, we have The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2. Now, the actual name of this game, we don't know yet. We do know a Breath of the Wild sequel is coming, so we'll see how this turns out. I mean, it's the Zelda team. When was the last time a Legend of Zelda game wasn't that great? I don't even remember, but Breath of the Wild, I am thinking, is going to be a very good game. I should say Breath of the Wild 2. Breath of the Wild 1 was obviously tremendous on the Nintendo Switch. And now we're getting a follow-up while it's still shrouded in mystery. Uh, it should be unveiled in a more prominent way here very, very soon. But we'll see how this one turns out. Hopefully it is out sometime in 2022. Of course, being a Nintendo Switch exclusive. Next up, Rocksteady is finally back after quite a while since the release of Batman Arkham Knight. They're swapping... IPs and going to Suicide Squad, we got Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. The game notes, don't be a hero, jump into the Suicide Squad, kill the Justice League. The genre-defying action-adventure third-person shooter in development from Rocksteady Studios, of course, the studio behind all of the Batman Arkham games outside of Arkham Origins. Rocksteady has done a terrific job with those set of games, but now they're diving into something new. This is also going to be a next-generation exclusive so far. You know, we don't know a ton about the game, but we have seen a little bit of footage and it's looking pretty solid. And again, when you have a studio with the track record that a Rocksteady has, you can be fairly confident that Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is going to turn out pretty well. It's going to have an online co-op aspect on top of that, so you'll be able to check this game out in multiplayer as well, scheduled for a release sometime in 2022. Next up, we have a Nightingale, a shared world survival crafting game in an all-new fantasy universe. This is one that 
that doesn't seem to have a ton of buzz right now, but it notes open world realms immerse you in a mystical Victorian setting where the remnants of humanity are threatened by the dark magic and nightmarish creatures of the Fae. It's a shared world adventure alone or unite with other players, combine your strengths and skills, and face the challenges of the realms together. Explore the realms and build and craft. Hopefully the game is due for a release sometime in 2022. Next up, we have a game of an IP that I'm a huge fan of. Stalker is finally back with Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl. Now, hopefully the NFT saga with this game is behind us. Hopefully it doesn't see any more delays. Initially, it was scheduled for a release in April. Has been pushed back all the way into December, but if it gives it the time to really bake in the oven and be a high-quality title and a return to form for Stalker, Hey, I can wait as long as it needs. Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl notes, Discover the vast Chernobyl exclusion zone, a full of dangerous enemies, deadly anomalies, and powerful artifacts. Unveil your own epic story as you make your way to the heart of Chernobyl. Make your choices wisely as they will determine your fate in the end. I imagine a very atmospheric, post-apocalyptic open world game here that is going to be very engrossing. Hopefully from a narrative st standpoint is quite strong as well. Again, the game is due out December 8th of 2022. Next up, we have Chia, a tropical open world adventure. Climb, glide, swim, and sail your boat around a beautiful archipelago in a physics-driven sandbox. Use Chia's special ability to take control of any animal or object you can find and jam on your fully playable ukulele, a game inspired by New Caledonia. You've got a free climbing mechanic that lets you ascend anything in the world without restriction, including any physics-driven tree, sail your uh, customizable boat on turquoise lagoons, and dive around coral reefs and shipwrecks. The game is scheduled for a release sometime soon. Once we have an official release window, I will update you guys. Next up, we have the return of Saints Row in the form of a bit of a reboot. Called Just Saints Row was scheduled for a release early in the year, has been pushed back, but I think that's fine, especially when you're doing a reboot like this. You want to make sure it's a slam dunk right out of the gate. You know, Saints Row is a franchise that, while I like Saints Row the Third and Saints Row Four, it was getting a little bit redundant. So seeing a bit of a refresh, I think, is going to be something healthy for the franchise going forward. The game is scheduled for release on August 23rd. And it notes, experience the biggest and best Saints Row playground ever created. The unique sprawling world of Santo Iso is the backdrop for a wild, larger-than-life sandbox of thrilling side hustles, criminal ventures, and blockbuster missions as you shoot, drive, and wingsuit your way to the top. Again, due for a release August 23rd. Next up, we have Gotham Knights, done by Warner Brothers Games Montreal. I mentioned how Rocksteady did all the Batman Arkham games outside of Arkham Origins. Well, who did Arkham Origins? It was, in fact, Warner Brothers Games Montreal, and now they got a new title, Gotham Knights. Batman is dead, a new expansive criminal underworld has swept the streets of Gotham City. It is now up to the Batman family, Batgirl, Nightwing, Red Hood, and Robin to protect Gotham. Gotham Knights is an open-world action RPG set in the most dynamic and interactive Gotham City yet patrol Gotham's five distinct boroughs in solo play or with one other hero and drop in on criminal activity whenever you find it. The game notes solving mysteries that connect the darkest chapter in the city's history to defeating notorious villains and epic confrontations. You must evolve into the new Dark Knight and save the streets from descent into chaos. The game is scheduled for release in 2022. A little bit of mystery surrounding the game as far as if it's going to hit 2022. I hope it does. I think it will. But uh, yeah, hopefully we get an update on this game sooner rather than later. Next up, we have The Day Before. The Day Before is an open world MMO survival set in a deadly post-pandemic America, overrun by flesh-hungry infected and survivors killing each other for food, weapons, and cars. Now, right away, when you look at this game, you're gonna immediately think of a couple other games. The general consensus of what games uh, people regard this game as, Last of Us, The Division, Kind of easy to see that crossover, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, those are two pretty known IPs. The game itself looks like it could have a lot of buzz surrounding it, especially if it delivers with its release June 21st, 2022 for PC. Uh, the console release should come sometime soon thereafter. Hopefully, we do see this game up, running, and at a smooth state come 2022, June 21st for PC release, and hopefully, again, the console release isn't going to be long after that. Next up, we have Ark 2. Ark Survival Evolved, obviously one of the more popular games that you're going to come across, and now we have Ark 2, next-gen graphics, next-gen online multiplayer sandbox, next-gen logo, and next-gen hype, as they did note with the announcement of the game. Survival Evolved was one of the most popular multiplayer games that you'll come across, and now you've got a next-generation title. 
I'm sure Arc 2 will also have quite a bit of buzz surrounding it and a healthy level of excitement as we get closer to the release at some point in 2022. Next up, another game that's been a long time coming. This is one I've been looking forward to for quite a while, and that is Starfield. Starfield is the first new universe in 25 years from Bethesda Game Studios, the award-winning creators of The Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim, and Fallout 4. Yes, I know many of you want to hear more about The Elder Scrolls 6, but we gotta get to Starfield first. You're looking at an open-world action-adventure RPG, and again, a brand new IP in this open-world vein that Bethesda is so well-known for. It's a game that's been in development for a very, very long time. I remember hearing the announcement of the game, seeing the reveal, and then the rumors leading up to that reveal E3 all those years ago, and then it went silent for a while, and now we finally know the game is going to come 11-11-2022. But kind of funny, because Skyrim actually came out 11-11-11, and now Starfield 11-11-22. But uh, hopefully the game turns out well. Always want to see new IPs succeed, so we'll see how Starfield turns out at the end of the year. Next up, Dokavi. This is a game that I am incredibly excited about. This is coming from Pearl Abyss. They've done some great stuff, including Black Desert. We'll mention another game on this list that's going to also be coming from Pearl Abyss. But Dokavi looks to be a, a title that is going to be akin to a monster collecting game. You know, Pokemon, I think, is what most people would compare it to. It's got a very charming art style. We'll see how it turns out. Um, you know, the, tr the initial trailer, the performance didn't look completely smooth, but uh, that's something that I'm sure that's going to get ironed out as the game gets closer and closer to its release. And it's got such a charming visual style. I think a lot of people are going to get into it from a wide array of demographics. I think anybody can really jump in and have a good time with this as long as fundamentally it is a high quality game. This is the type of game that I think a lot of people just want to see on consoles, and it will be available on PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and Microsoft Windows PC. Next up, another Pearl Abyss game. Let's just mention this, Crimson Desert. Crimson Desert was a game that I think when everybody saw the trailer, their jaw was just on the floor from a technical standpoint. Now, I have a little bit of uncertainty surrounding this game just based on the fact that I saw the trailer and I was like, my god, from a technical standpoint, this game looks ridiculous, but it's also at this point scheduled for a release on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. I just don't know how they're going to condense this game on the PS4 and Xbox One, but we'll see. On the PS5 and Xbox Series and PC, of course, high-end PCs, I think it's going to be quite visually appealing to look at. Obviously, ultimately, the game has to be more than that, but I think it can develop into one of the more popular open-world action RPGs that we're going to see in quite a while. We don't know the release window for this yet, so let's cross our fingers for 2022. Next up, here's another game that I've been looking forward to for a very long time, and that is Ulti Zero Games' Lost Soul Aside. This game has been in development for quite a while, and I've been looking forward to it for a very long time. I mean, when you right away look at the gameplay, looks stylish, looks sleek, the presentation is reminiscent of a Final Fantasy game, and then the gameplay is reminiscent of a Devil May Cry game. You cross those two together, you give me a compelling story, you give me a great soundtrack, that's what it looks like we're getting out of Lost Soul Aside. The game has been in development for a very, very long time. Hopefully, it's going along smoothly and they're making solid progress on the game, but I'm hoping to see it sometime either later this year, hopefully, finally, in 2023, we'll get Lost Soul Aside because... I know it's not a huge studio working on the game, but I know myself and many others have been really looking forward to the game. So again, uh, hopefully solid progress is being made. Next up, we have a brand new game coming from Ubisoft, and that is Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. Yes, Avatar is getting a big budget video game. Frontiers of Pandora is a first-person action-adventure game built using the latest iteration of the Snowdrop engine and developed exclusively for the new generation of consoles and PC. Frontiers of Pandora brings to life the alluring world of Pandora, with all of its beauty and danger in an immersive open world experience. We don't know much about the game at this stage. We're still waiting on a full gameplay drop, but hopefully this is one that turns out pretty well. Wouldn't expect it for a little bit, but as a true next generation game, it is going to be something to keep your eye on. Next up, we have a brand new sci-fi action FPS coming from Munfish. That is Atomic Heart, an open world action RPG where events of which unfold in an alternate universe during the high noon of the Soviet Union. Your P3, a special KGB agent who is investigating the catastrophic event at facility number 3826. A game that a lot of people have been looking forward to for quite a while. I believe it initially saw its announcement back in 2017. 
So you're talking five years since this game was revealed, but the game is scheduled for release later this year. So hopefully that finally happens. A lot of people draw resemblances to a Bioshock, and obviously that immediately is going to get people excited. Looks a little gruesome, looks a little bit more on the mature side. You got some gnarly looking uh, creatures in this game as well and looks like to be some exhilarating gameplay again hopefully we do see the game released by the end of 2022 next up how about a racing open world title test drive unlimited solar crown yeah tdu is back test drive unlimited is finally coming back in open world driving and lifestyle experience in a real world location built on a one-to-one -one scale grab your keys and live your life of luxury remember social status is everything in the world of tdu a driving and lifestyle experience unlike any other the brand new test drive unlimited keeps the dna from the first games and revamps it for the modern era you have the freedom to progress however you like the classic open championship concept returns as well live your best life race cruise and hang out with your friends until the sun goes down and even after you've got a variety of different marquee vehicles and the game is scheduled for release september of 2022 Next up, we have the follow-up to The Forest in Sons of the Forest. This is a game that's been announced for a, a, quite a while, but uh, we still don't know much about it. Sons of the Forest is the anticipated sequel to the horror survival game, and we are expected to the re uh, see the release of Sons of the Forest later this year. So we'll see how it turns out. I mean, this is one of those games that I think is going to be one that just builds up a crazy amount of hype within the last two weeks before it's released that's just how i see it going down because the forest was incredibly popular again uh should be releasing later this year next up we have arcane studios the studio behind dishonored and prey they are bringing a brand new IP in Redfall to Xbox Series X and S and PC. Now, this is a game that we just got a CG trailer for. It's an open world action adventure, first person shooter. You can play it solo or you can play it cooperatively. You can play as four different characters, each with unique backgrounds and abilities. And the game is set in an island town of Redfall, Massachusetts. Arcane is an incredibly talented studio. The CG trailer from an ambiance standpoint didn't blow me away. And yes, would I have liked to see a Dishonored 3? Would I have liked to see a Prey 2 or something like that? Sure, but a new IP can always be something of a surprise hit, and it's an incredibly talented studio in Arcane, and I think they are going to deliver on that front. Again, the game will be dropping summer of this year. Next up, we have a sci-fi open-world action RPG in Elix 2. Yes, Elix was an RPG that came out quite a while ago, but now we have the follow-up in Elix 2. In this sequel to the vintage open-world RPG, Elix Jax must once again unite the free people of the science fantasy world of Magalan against a new threat, the Skyans, who want to change the face of the planet forever. Now, if you look at this game and you compare it to some of the other big-budget open-world titles, like if you compare it to A Crimson Desert, visually, is it as blow away? No, but I I think from a narrative standpoint, it could be something good. And Piranha Bytes is one of those studios that have sneakily been one of the more notable RPG studios in terms of consistency. And hopefully with Alex 2, it just takes them to the next level. And THQ Nordic is the publisher, and they've been putting out a lot of stuff. So hopefully this falls in line as another quality release by them. March 1st is the drop date for Alex 2. Next up, we have Hogwarts Legacy. I know a lot of you guys are excited for this one. Hogwarts Legacy is an immersive open-world action RPG set in the world first introduced in the Harry Potter books. Now you can take control of the action and be the center of your own adventure in the wizarding world. Embark on a journey through familiar and new locations as you explore and discover fantastic beasts, customize your character and craft potions, master your spellcasting, upgrade talents, and become the wizard you want to be. Experience Hogwarts in the 1800s. Your character is a student who holds the key to an ancient secret that threatens to tear the wizarding world apart all that comes from the official website the game looks to be scheduled for a 2022 release window some of that has been been put into question some people think it might be pushed to 2023 so we'll see how that turns out hopefully whenever it does drop we just hope it's a high quality title as an open world rpg Next up, I do want to note No Man's Sky's Nintendo Switch release. Now, yes, No Man's Sky has been out for a very long time, but this is like an ever-present game, an ever-evolving game. We just saw the release of No Man's Sky Sentinels, a free significant update to the game. 
adding quite a bit of new content and now the game is going to be making the transition to the Nintendo Switch. I think that's pretty exciting. It'll be interesting to see how high quality they can get No Man's Sky onto the Switch, but hey, they got The Witcher 3 on the Switch. Uh, optimization is everything and I think Hello Games is going to be able to do a pretty good job getting this game onto the Switch. Let's hope for the best as it is dropping on the Switch later this year. And lastly... We have a brand new Star Ocean game coming from Square Enix and Star Ocean The Divine Force. Now, Star Ocean is a JRPG franchise that I've been a fan of for a very, very long time. It does go without saying that the last couple of Star Ocean games haven't been a complete slam dunk in everyone's eyes. Star Ocean 4, The Last Hope, I did enjoy, but that game had some storytelling fumbles. And then Star Ocean Integrity and Faithlessness, the last one... That game was just not very good. Star Ocean The Divine Force, however, looks to be a refresh on the franchise. Looks to have bigger open environments. Traversal seems to be done in an interesting way, and hopefully from a narrative standpoint, it delivers as well. And Star Ocean, from a gameplay standpoint, more often than not, is pretty good. I love the gameplay of The Last Tobe, so if they can build upon that, I think we're in for a pretty solid JRPG here. It's coming to PS4, PS5, Xbox Series, Xbox One, and PC sometime in 2022. And that is gonna do it for me. Again, we just ran through a bunch of open world titles. Uh, I'm sure there are more that are going to be announced, more that are in development, and we'll do an updated video at some point. Maybe we'll do a video that's dedicated to a specific platform in the future as well. This is just running the gamut on a lot of the upcoming open world games that stood out to me. That's going to do it for me. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.